Well, hello everyone. Phil here and welcome to a little special video. We actually finished Assassin's Creed Mirage early and I, I kind of figured we would um, because I figured that the game wouldn't have three hours of content to do today in the final stream, which is fine. We, we gave it enough time. I was able to see the ending without rushing or whatever. It was good. But it's all wrapped up and now because of that we have like around 45 minutes just time to kill and uh, I'm here to chill. I'm here to chill with my viewers. So whatever you guys want to talk about today, Let's see what people want to talk about. A little bit of Q&A here. If anyone supports the stream, thanks. I'll, I'll give you a shout out and, you know, update the leaderboard as usual. But this is more just a chill session. So let's see what you guys want to discuss today. All right. So here we go. Right now, what would you guys like to talk about? Um, please tag me in the chat and we will begin some Q&A. Am I playing RoboCop? I have no idea. I'm definitely not playing it as a new release because I'm going to be playing four other games. I'm starting tomorrow it's Sonic Superstars starting Friday it's Super Mario Wonder and Spider-Man 2 a week from then is Alan Wake 2 and if you think there's any way that in the next two weeks I'm finishing four games at the same time you're you're crazy there's no way I'm finishing all those games maybe one or two like maybe I'll finish Sonic first because we're getting a two day head start on that but I don't foresee me finishing all those games and then the major releases in November are Like a Dragon Gaiden and Modern Warfare 3, which are both the 9th and 10th respectively. Those are my focus. If we happen to have some time in between, but I get the feeling people are going to say, hey, whatever happened to Street Fighter 6? Hey, where's uh, Starfield? And I think those are going to be more focused uh, games to play. You know, I'm not saying I would never play RoboCop, but it's certainly not uh, something that I was planning on doing because we got another full, full schedule of other big high-profile releases. So... <clears throat> What was my favorite overall Assassin's Creed game? You know, again, I hate when people do this. Here's my favorites. Assassin's Creed 2 Trilogy, but probably Brotherhood I liked more than any of them because it had the whole, uh, like, like clan building aspect to it, and I actually enjoyed that, building your own brotherhood of, like, mini assassins going around doing, like, assassinations and stuff was kind of cool. Uh, and Black Flag. I like the story of Black Flag. I like the implementation of the ship battles and stuff like that. Um... I don't necessarily have an overall favorite. I don't play favorites like that. I just like certain things in a franchise, and those are my favorites, okay? <clears throat> All right. Do I think the ending of Mirage was stupid? I don't think it was stupid. I don't want to spoil for those who didn't see the end of Mirage, but basically the entire game of Assassin's Creed Mirage is removed from the plot line of the other games. It feels like a standalone experience. Here's someone who becomes an assassin and their their journey killing the order members and all of that in Baghdad then all of a sudden in the end oh here's an ending that ties to all the other games but what if you weren't even into that like the, the rest of the game had nothing to do with it so it is kind of silly because it's like they assume you care and maybe some people don't maybe people bought this as a way to jump back into the franchise after being out for like many years why would they care about how this ties into the main plot line I think that was a misstep <clears throat> Uh, I agree, X-Shooter. I think that the Miles Morales expansion for Spider-Man was a great one. It kind of pushed forward a little bit, but it really was more of the same with a little bit of advancement with the better abilities that Miles has. But still, it's it's the same game. It's still good. I mean, the Spider-Man PS4, PS5 is a great game. Uh, I'm not going to give it a score out of 10, Hindenburger. I'll just say if you like classic Assassin's Creed, uh, you know, stealth, assassinations, takedowns, and using tools to do your missions and planning rather than gung-ho running in like an idiot and doing a bunch of combat this is your game if you're looking for a streamlined game that's 20 hours long versus a game that's insanely bloated that's 80 hours long this is your game but i'm not going to give it a number rating that's not screen mirage that is okay <clears throat> cletus again when you guys ask me these questions i answer the same way every time will i play Baldur's gate 3 i have no idea people like the game they'd like to possibly see me play it doesn't look like there's a way I could play it on PC. Probably even my mini PC wouldn't run it at a good resolution. It's now on PS5. It's insanely long RPG. I tried playing a game that was similar in Divinity Original Sin 2. I played 60 freaking hours of it, and everyone got bored, including fans of it got bored. The problem with a game like Baldur's Gate 3, all right, here's the problem. I'm a variety content creator, correct? It's very rare when I have opportunity to sit down and only play a lot of one game. This week that I just played Assassin's Creed Mirage so much to finish it within a week is the crazy exception to the rule when it comes to me and my content. Typically, I always balance two, three, and sometimes even four or more games, and I try to space them so that that way there's a little bit of something for everyone. You like fighting games? You're in the right place. You like FPS games? You're in the right place. RPGs? 
action games, Assassin's Creed, Halo, whatever it is, I play a little bit of everything. I dabble in everything. I'm not a master of anything, but at least there's this insane amount of variety in my content, correct? Baldur's Gate 3, being that it is such an immersive, detailed, uh, complex, and very lengthy RPG, that's the kind of game that to really get into it, you have to be playing this game constantly, right? If I were to play Baldur's Gate 3 twice a week, six hours, do you know how long it would take me to beat it? Probably five months. Do you know how many people would watch the playthrough for five months? Zero. Because even I wouldn't watch it for that long. You mean? You know what I'm saying? Those kind of insanely extended long games just don't really fit my formula. I mean, take a look at Starfield right now. And this is a new game that came out in September. And I'm like 40 hours in and most people are done with it. They don't even care to see me play it again. And the thing is, I, I like the story. I want to keep going. I want to have it as a chill playthrough style game. And a lot of people are just, nah, we're writing it off. We're done with that crap, you know? Uh, I don't think that this is necessarily a negative towards Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not saying the game's too long. The game is boring. I'm not saying that. I'm saying for the kind of gamer and content creator I am, the game doesn't really fit my formula. My formula is play a game two, three times a week tops, you know, balance it with a bunch of other stuff. And if the game demands more attention than that, sadly, it ain't going to work. That's exactly why I just skipped Lords of the Fallen. And I told you guys, if you want to see me play it, I'll play it later on when I have time to focus on it. When there's four or five other games coming out, there's no way I could give the amount of attention I need to give a game like Lords of the Fallen. So why bother? Why even start playing it just to have disappointment, right? So that's what I mean. Baldur's Gate 3, could it happen in the future? Maybe. But I'd have to basically have it as like a major featured game at a time when there's nothing else going on and everyone would have to want to see it a lot for it to really work and I don't know if it would ever would work like that. You know what I'm saying? I think that there is a a style of gamer out there that plays that kind of immersive RPG and does a way better job than I would. So maybe it doesn't fit. So I'm not saying no, never. I'm saying likely not, but I guess we'll see. Fair enough. I received a $10 tip from Kekak. I want you to play Jury in Street Fighter 6. Are you completely against that idea? Her mash jab's amazing, almost on Ken's level. I'm not against it. <clears throat> I know she's really, really great. If you remember, I did try her out in the beta, and at that point, I didn't even understand the basic concepts of the game. I didn't understand how Drive Rush worked. I didn't understand how the parrying worked. <clears throat> I was implementing none of those things. So I, I could tell that she was powerful, but it didn't really click with me at that point, and I never went back to her. Um, I certainly feel like if I were to go back and play with her, I'd probably end up doing decently because she is insanely good. Her rushdown, her, she has freaking crazy safe rushdown. Like, her medium punch is so broken. She could stand me from mid-screen and just go punch, punch, drive rush, punch, 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 punch. And it stuffs, like, almost everyone's stuff. It's that good. Uh, and you're right, mash jab when someone's near you, it can beat everything. And she could get, like, a random hit. She can just jump in the air, press any button, and if it hits from anywhere on the screen, keep pressing jab, and it combos, and she gets a combo off of it. No intention of a combo. It just happens, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, would I ever use her? Maybe. I, I hate to say it right now. We're in the, a, a part of time when, you know, I played Street Fighter Six intensely for four months, right? I really did. Like, June, July, August, September, I played the crap out of it. Now we're at a time where, really, we have to scale back. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to play it once next week. Seriously. Now, I know there's people who love it, and I've told you guys I want to keep playing, but i got four games to play. So, we'll see in the future. Again, it's not a no. It's a, man, I don't know if and when we get around to it to really start focusing on a new character at this point. You know, I'm not like everyone else who kind of plays these games at this level, and, and they, they just hyper-focus on that game and get good with every character or whatever. So, um, let's see here. Am I dying to play Alan Wake 2? Uh, I don't know. You know, I'll be honest, I didn't spoil myself on it. I've heard it's way more horror. Which is cool. I'd rather have it, actually, I think, be way more horror. Alan Wake 1 was good and had a lot of cool thriller, suspense plot lines. A lot of people compared it to, say, the Twin Peaks franchise and stuff like that. I liked that, having this this thriller, mystery, supernatural elements. But it got very boring and grindy near the end and uh, kind of felt like it was a little bit too long, almost. Um, Alan Wake 2 is supposed to be horror where you play with two completely different characters and different play styles with a lot of scary and gory stuff in it. Could be cool. Uh, I'm excited for it. They certainly took a while to make it. So you got to hope that it's good. Uh, I hope it is. I hope it's actually Remedy's best game. I would love if it was. So, But am I like monstrously hyped for it? No. 
I'm excited for it. I loved the first game many years ago. That playthrough, a lot of people loved back in the day that I did over a decade ago, but we'll see if it's any good, you know? No, I do not play any video games in any major way off stream. The only gameplay I ever do is like a silly mobile game. You know, doing some grinding style gameplay. The, the gameplay that I do off stream is not a major game playthrough. It's nothing like that. No. I'm here on this stream six days a week, more than a full time worker at any job. You know, when I'm on streaming days, typically I'm in here between 10, 10, 30 a.m. And I'm here till past 10 p.m. with a break for dinner. And that is my work. And I don't like having work permeate into my private life. If there's anything that I do outside of this room, it's not mainstream gaming on purpose. Well, imagine if my whole life was that. I'd be burnt out. I would probably hate what I do. So I purposefully turn off that aspect of my life when I leave this room. So that way it's not all games, 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 games. And a lot of people have asked me over the years, how did you never get burnt out? That's really why I made that distinction that I wasn't going to carry my, my, my work outside of this room into my private life. You know, my wife liked doing everything but gaming together for good reason. It's a good thing. I received a $4.20 tip. Uh, from Spider Nico. First of all, let's play the animation for them and then see what they have to say here. Thank you, Spider Nico, for a tip today. It is raining very heavily outside today, but it's very nice. I like the cool air and everything as a result. I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3 on my MacBook Air. 18 hours in, I'm barely into Act 1 of 3. You would definitely enjoy the game, but it's not a game for a viewing-style audience. It would be a nice, chill stream for sure, but people would end up dropping it because it's so slow. I would compare it to reading a great fantasy book. It has around 200 hours of content. And I'm not saying that also, I'm not saying that there aren't people out there that could make that work for a stream. I know there are. Just I don't think that it's me, you know? <clears throat> Cypress says, one of your previous videos, you mentioned that Blanca and Honda were your go-to fighters. Eventually, you did work on a top-tier fighter in Vega. What top-tier fighter would you use in Street Fighter VI? I have no idea. Probably not Ken. I really don't have a stomach for characters that are easy mode broken. I'll give you an example. All right. In the Street Fighter III series, both in the original Street Fighter III and uh, Double Impact. Is it Double Impact? Second Impact. Because then there was Third Strike. So, Second Impact. In the first two versions of Street Fighter III, Ibuki is either the best or tied for best I think it was in one of them it was Akuma was the best and she was tied for like second she is so brokenly easy to play in those games in one of the games she has a standing roundhouse infinite where she can nudge herself forward and do standing roundhouse infinitely and she wins the entire round there's nothing you can do she's completely broken and that's why they had other versions of the game patched and fixed her okay I literally refuse to use her because it's just it's broken shit it's too easy in Marvel vs. Capcom 1 Hands down, the best character in the game is Strider Hiryu. He has a, a sequence of attacks he can do, normals. That's like 5-6 hit combo. When it ends, he gains a super meter. His super is called Ouroboros. It's a, a ring of uh, blades that spin around him that make it so that you can only hit him once and then the blades interrupt you. You can never combo him while the super is activated. So it's an invincible shield, essentially. The problem is once he activates it, he can then go on a string of attacks again that builds up a super so he can activate it again. So then he can build up his super and he can activate it again. Strider Hiryu is 100% the best character simply because he has this super move. It's broken to hell. Guess what character I don't use in Marvel vs. Capcom 1? I never use Strider. I've used him. I never use him though. Why? I just don't like that. I, For me, I like the idea that at least I'm on... A situation where the character is good but it takes skill to use like for example vega and super turbo is a great character but he takes skill to use he's a little tricky and he, you need to know how to do safe pokes and fireball characters can beat him if he doesn't know how to get around the fireballs you know ball raw he's insanely good if you learn his bullying style gameplay ball raw can easily be zoned by a fireball user if you don't know how to bully the character and get in their face and stop them from throwing fireballs so there's an element of skill to dominating with those characters, as opposed to old Sagat, who's easily broken in that game and can be played as a basic Shoto and dominate most of the cast. I don't like that. You see, I want characters that have an element of challenge to them while they're also good. 
And that's why I've always gravitated toward characters that are not necessarily the most overpowered character in a game. So if I were to use a top tier character in Street Fighter VI, it probably would not be Ken. Um, you know, and you think about the rest of the cast, and it's like, well, who's kind of... Bro I mean, honestly, Guile seems really stupid to me. He doesn't have to do anything. He just stands there. He does perfect sonic booms. Half the cast can't get pot by them, right? He recovers so fast from sonic boom, he can do his flash kick after it, which is so ridiculous. And his normals are very high priority. He's very basic, but he's rewarded for very basic, simple gameplay. And I don't know if I like that. It just seems too good for a basic style character. So I don't know if I would use Guile either, you know? I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it, but, you know, probably not Ken and Guile. There you go. Am I playing the Avatar game in December? Probably yes. And I'll probably end up going with the Ubisoft Plus subscription, just like I did with Assassin's Creed uh, Mirage. I probably just renew my subscription for 18 bucks and get the game and beat it within a month again, just like I did with Assassin's Creed Mirage. That way I don't have to pay full price for these games. Okay. As you guys know, I don't talk politics, so don't ask me questions about Trump. It's ridiculous. Okay. What else do you guys want to chat about? We still have tons of time. Like I said, uh, we beat this game so early. I wasn't anticipating beating it that early. So, whatever you guys want to chat about is, uh, you know, I'm all ears. I do not have a dog. If I had a dog, I would not go on a walk, a, a, a walk at like a hike or in a park because we have a dog walk park behind us right here where we live. And that's just where I would take the dog. But we don't have a dog. Nah. See, David says Chun-Li might be good because she's very good, but nothing easy. I tried. I say these characters who have stance changes and stuff, I'll be honest, I'm too old for it. Like, no exaggeration, when I tried to play with Chun-Li, I wasn't... Do I did decent when I played with her online. Keep in mind, this was months ago before the meta was discovered. I did decent, but my hand was killing me trying to play with that character, and I couldn't consistently get her stance change to come out, so I couldn't consistently play well with her. And it was frustrating, because I'm like... It's easy. If you can get that stance change mastered, right? If you get it mastered, I'd be per like, wow, I'd do really well. I can't. I was I was trying to do it. I was dropping it, and my hand was killing me. I'm just not for these high execution characters anymore. I'm getting too old. I already can tell you I have carpal tunnel in my right hand, and it's just going to get worse the older I get. DJ I might do better with. Someone's asking what about DJ. I might do better with DJ uh, when I played him. It was very early in the game, about the first few days, and I didn't get him at all because he plays absolutely nothing like Super Turbo DJ. He's a completely different character from the ground up. They did not keep any of his old move properties or anything. He's just totally redesigned, okay? Um, <clears throat> he's different now. He is a safe mode, mix-up, rushdown character, meaning he plays it safe, and he tries to go for ridiculous distance moves. Like, he waits for you to do one mistake, punish it, and then get a giant combo off of it. He waits for you to jump. He instantly gets his incredibly good anti-air. He waits for you to be mid to long screen. Then he starts tossing double fireballs. That's all he is. There, he's kind of a one-trick pony. The problem is his trick is hard to beat. His trick is very hard to beat because he's a great defensive character. Um, So I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like playing a character where his whole offense is based off of like this one pattern that's safe and then every once in a while look for you to make a mistake and stuff it and then get a giant reward. I don't like that at all. His his giant reward combos are stupidly damaging, too. Like, oh, I'm doing a combo and I dropped an input. Okay, here comes DJ's punish. It's like, punch, punch, drive rush, punch, 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 cancel into a move, drive rush, another move, that's the up into level 3 super, and it's like 80% damage. Like, dude, my move didn't come out, and you just did 80% damage because one move I did didn't come out. What the fuck? <laughs> that drives me nuts. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm not going to talk. I keep saying I'm not going to talk political stuff. And people keep asking me political bait questions, which I'm not going to do. So you can just cut that shit out right now. <laughs> That's not what I'm here for. Like I said, you know, as I get older, maybe one day in the future, that'd be something we do. Right? But we're not doing that now. Uh, and still, things are still good in the gaming landscape. I can still cover games and, you know, hang out with you guys and chat it up. And we don't have to get so politicized. You know, I don't have to immediately go to that drama shit like most YouTubers have these past few years because it's the only way they can make any money or get views. I don't have to do that. So I'm not going there. <clears throat> uh, well, what a name. Ala, Ala Brihe says, do I think the next Tekken will live up to expectations or not? Like Mortal Kombat 1 and King of Fighters? You know, I don't know. Because here's the thing, I'm just not in the loop when it comes to Tekken. Um, I like Tekken. I think it's very flashy. I think it's a sound combat engine. But I just haven't been following along the competitive nature of Tekken for a very long time. You know, I played Tekken 1, 2, and 3 and loved them. And then 4, I kind of played, but I was so heavily in the Street Fighter and the Versus series that I kind of didn't really play it. And then everything else came out. And I played, like, I own Tekken 5. I played it on a beautiful L LCD monitor at home. And I loved the music and the graphics, and I just, I never really got good at it. I just messed around with it. You know, Tekken 6 and 7, I covered for YouTube, and I sucked ass at both. I know I did. I wasn't good. Um, Tekken 8, I don't know. It's just so, it's so much of an investment to learn an engine like that, because it's so different. Like, a little bit of fundamentals of, like, old school fighting games will, will be used in Tekken, but there's so much to learn with the 3D plane, the sidesteps, the counter hits, the perfect, uh parries to get moves out of the way the perfect fr just frame moves that are, have better properties the juggles the otgs there's so much to learn and i don't know if i really am going to be interested in putting that much time into it so when you say you know will it live up to expectations i don't know what's the expectation for me the expectation of a good fighting game is it better have good net code because street fighter 6 still to this day has the best net code even though i complain about it that's because i'm playing it at a, at a level where i can see that you know what I mean? When I play Mortal Kombat 1 and the best connection I can get is 80 milliseconds. And I play Mortal Kombat, or excuse me, I play Street Fighter 6 and the average connection is 30 milliseconds. That's definite evidence that the netcode's better on one versus the other. Right? So, yeah, I, you know, for me, I would like to have matches that are responsive online. I'd like to have features so that it has good offline content as well as online content. So it's not just about playing online and sweating it out, but instead actually having something to do offline that's fun too whether that's a story mode or an extra mode whatever it may be um you know those would be factors for me but i don't know for me you know when you look at it it's like am i gonna get into it and care as much probably not you know but maybe i, I don't know we'll see it comes what end of january early february i think it's end of january right i'm definitely gonna give it a shot so okay haha <clears throat> <laughs> Escanor says, do you think people in Masters of Street... I don't know how this got, became a Street Fighter 6 discussion, but somehow it has. Do you think people in the Masters of Street Fighter 6 uh, with top-tier characters are there because of skill or because of the character they play besides the actual pros? I don't know. I, I haven't followed their journey up there. I mean, I'll tell you this. You see, when I play Master, there are some terrible shrubs in Master, right? People who I double perfect. People who don't even understand fundamentals. They know a pattern. And if the pattern works, they win the whole round and dominate you. And then the moment the pattern breaks, they fold like a, a, a deck of, or, or a house of cards. They don't know what the hell they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, I <laughs> there's definitely scrubs in, in in Master, but I'm sure there's good players in Master. I am, you know, nearly played enough to make judgments. I don't think. Thank you, Game Master. I did another super chat. Uh, you're already up there. You were the latest super chatter beforehand. So. Thank you for that. What's the next turn-based RPG I'm playing? Probably Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth in January. Pfft. 
what are my highest possible standards for a game? That's too generic of a question. Every game's different. Every genre of game, style of game is completely different. You don't have standards for all games. You know, the basic premise of a game, it has to be functional. <clears throat> you know, it has to work and not constantly crash. It has to be at least functional to the expectations of what you want when you have a game, meaning it plays, it plays decently and doesn't have bugs and things every five seconds. You know, but every style of game is completely different. You can't just have generic rules. <clears throat> oh, that is true. I forgot about that. Mario RPG. The Mario RPG remake comes out next month, and that's turn-based. So we'll probably be doing that uh, late November into December. Yeah, so that's probably the next turn-based one. I didn't even remember that. No, I've never checked out Mountain Blade. People mentioned it here over the years, but no one ever really was interested or too interested in seeing me play it, so I've never played it. What happened to Sea of Stars? I didn't get to it. It came out when I was playing Chrono Trigger. We finished Chrono Trigger. We've been busy since. So maybe I'll play it eventually, but I can't play every game. Don't have time. Everything's going good today. I'm happy we beat Assassin's Creed with the time we had allotted. It's always good to do that. And now to move on to the new stuff, right? What is an improvement I'd like to implement in OBS, but I can't? One thing that I would like to do is have one of those shortcut devices, like a stream deck, which I have. I own a stream deck. It was donated multiple years ago by a fan. And I'd like to have that program. So when I'm streaming, let's say I wanted to transition to a certain scene, I could just press the button or... What if I wanted to play a sound effect or play a silly animation or something going on, right? Like, let's say I'm playing uh, a Dark Souls game and I, I die sillily. I can press a button and have Adam Sandler go, you blew it, right? And then go back to, right back to the game. That'd be funny, but I don't, I, it doesn't work. My, my Windows is Windows 8, and I can't upgrade the Windows because my PC's too old. So I'm stuck. I have a Steam Deck that only works with Windows 10 or above. It won't even work with my current PC. I, you know, it sucks. It's just sitting around. So that kind of stuff I'd like to do, but being that I have, I have old hardware and limitations, I can't really do it. So that I said that would be the one thing. Like everything I think in my streams works well, right? Everything seems to it looks good, sounds good, you know. By the way, I'm gonna take these glasses off because they're actually really bothering me right now, and I don't know why. So I'd rather just take them off before I start scratching my face constantly, which would not be good. Um, but yeah, uh, that's what I would think. Like something kind of a quick implementation of something funny or silly would be nice. But outside of that, I think everything else is, works pretty good. You know? Oh, yeah. I, I fully believe that JP is top tier in Street Fighter Six, better than most people think. I fully believe that. I think that that character's build is ridiculous. The more I play against that character, I realize you can't do much against him at all. All of his normals are such high priority that they trade or beat you outright. And the moment that you trade, you're at a disadvantage. And the moment that he beats you outright, you get a full combo. And it seems like from anywhere on the screen, this guy can full combo you. You know, it's ridiculous. He gets a glancing blow. It's all of a sudden, it's insanely full combo for giant damage. You know, he can't, he, he freaking com combos into level three from anywhere on the screen. He, it's a teleport, right? I fully believe that, that he is underrated and people don't realize how good he actually is. And why? Because he's a new character. If he was a returning character, people would have known that right from the get-go, but he's a new character, so people didn't really understand his utilization and his build and stuff yet. But why is it that most other characters worry about jumping on Blanca and JP doesn't give two shits? Because his jumping kick is such such great priority, he's always at that right angle. He's gonna stuff or trade and block. You know, he's like, I don't care. I'll just go for it. Right? It's pretty ridiculous. Uh, I received a four dollar twenty cent tip. As a, I don't know who this is. Is no name. As a fan of Jack and the Jack X game, which is Mario Kart with some missiles, I love to see the game redone for PS Five. Any games from your infancy you'd like to see redone, like Resident Evil 4? Uh, you're saying my infancy. You realize the games in my infancy are like Moon Patrol and Dig Dug and Karateka 
and Ball Blazer. You're talking about Atari games. Those are games from my infancy. <laughs> so, no, I don't think any of those games would work to a modern audience. They're just, they're so outdated. No, I don't think so. Um, most of the games that I used to play back in the day on Nintendo and stuff that I liked, they do continue. Final Fantasy, Mario, Zelda, they're all still going. Um, so, no, I don't think so. I don't think I, I don't think I have a legit answer to that question. So, <clears throat> how do you convince your dad to go to Disneyland? Any ideas? Tell him there's free beer. What is the appropriate time to start playing Christmas music? Uh, well, for yourself, whenever the hell you want. If you're playing it for yourself, it's appropriate whenever you feel like. Why would you limit when what you listen to and when? you know that's your your own deal if you're playing it for others like if you're playing it in a house or in a public setting um i would say you you know it has to be past halloween because a lot of people argue that even though thanksgiving is a big national holiday in the united states that it's nowhere near as important as uh you know christmas or halloween or those so maybe you know november ish i mean let's be honest there's christmas stuff at the store right now if you go there you could buy a christmas tree it's been there for weeks, right? So, <laughs> but I would say you got to get Halloween done at a very minimum. Oh, uh, I got another tip. Thank you, guys. A $10 tip from Tiakat. Name the top five best characters in Street Fighter Six. no particular order. Uh, I don't know. I, you already know the top tier. The top tier is obviously Ken is at the tippity top. And then you got characters like JP, uh, uh, Jury, uh, definitely uh, DJ, Guile, um, I don't know. I would have to sit there and look at the character list. You know, I don't think of these things. Honestly, I don't. I don't waste the brain cells unless I'm playing the game. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Thank you for the tip. There is a World Cup for Valve's game Dota 2 happening in Seattle. Every single team is complaining about homeless people everywhere. Just an anecdote. Laughing out loud. I have not been to Seattle since 2018. That was the last time I actually went into Seattle. And the good reason is, you know, my wife had, had wasn't even my wife then, but she had just moved here with me. And I wanted to show her some of the nice stuff from being around. And when we went, it was all right. But a lot of the stuff at that point was under renovation, which kind of sucked. Like, I remember both the Space Needle and the pier where we were going the mall part was it being renovated you're like well that sucks like half the stuff's closed uh we still did some nice things when we went but you know since then things went downhill it's it's well documented that it's not it's not political it's factual seattle as a major city has degraded itself there's not enough police to go around to stop the the, the way the people are behaving there is rampant crime there's tons of businesses that have moved out of Seattle because they keep getting robbed. I wish that that was a joke or, oh, that's a political thing, right? It's not. There's tons of businesses that said, we can't be robbed every night. People are coming with smash and grab every night, um, you know, just running into our stores during the day, grabbing product, running out the door, and we can't operate like this. And we're not joking. Major stores, Target, Target. Yes, the major retailer Target closed stores in downtown Seattle because it was so bad, the theft. And there seems to be no one doing anything about it. You know, the the previous mayor quit, didn't seek re-election. The new mayor came in, said all this high, high, mighty stuff, lofty stuff, did nothing, is not helping. And the police, there's actually whistleblowers in the police force saying, yeah, the government here isn't supporting us. We need help to make the city better. And they're, we're not, they're, they're, they have the least amount of police per person ratio of like the entire country in Seattle. There's just not enough police to police the city. So everyone gets away with everything. They've actually gotten to the point, if you're caught th th uh, stealing, they just let you go. They just they take the product back and they just le release you. Because they don't even want to bother with booking you and putting bringing you in jail. Because it's such a common thing. They just let you go now. I'm not joking. They won't arrest you for stealing here in, in this area of the country anymore. Um, It's that bad. Homeless... It's just as bad. There's tons of homeless people out in the street. Not where I live, because I live in a suburb of Seattle, so we're not affected as much by it. But yeah, in Seattle, it's just it's it's a rampant thing. And 
no one seems to want to really tackle it any kind of a, a reasonable way. And it sucks because, like, my wife and I say, gee, we'd like to go back to Seattle and actually do some tourism stuff. When we went, the Space Needle was messed up. When we went, the pier was half closed. There's no point in going now. It's all the reports. It's just terrible down there. It's just constant, you know, people in the streets, you know, committing thieving and everything. It's like, why the fuck would you want to go there and deal with that? So, you know, maybe it'll get better at some point, but, yeah, I wouldn't want to deal with that shit. I wouldn't want to go there and put myself in that situation, you know? That I don't know, because a lot of people talk about the whole sanctuary city thing. I have no clue. I'm, I've never, I've not followed that story. Uh, I'm not paying any attention to the politics of that. So, would I want a Super Mario RPG two if the remake does well? Yes. I wish they just made it two and didn't do the remake. I wish they just had done that. <laughs> When do I eat lunch on a streaming day? I don't. Before I stream, I eat breakfast, which is usually a bagel with some cream cheese and a, and a, a black coffee. That's my breakfast. Then I come to stream, and I'm here in this room from like 10, 10, 30, all the way till past 4 p.m. And then I have dinner between 4, 35 p.m., which is today. I think we're having turkey hot dogs and some pasta salad. I think that's what we're having for dinner. And then I do my second stream. And then at night, usually I have like a snack at night, maybe like a sandwich or, you know, something. Something like some leftovers sometimes, you know. I, so those are my three meals. Like a breakfast, dinner, night snack are my three meals. So I don't really have a lunch per se. Uh... No, American Maga Undertaker, he says, it seems like you use vague terms when you describe game news. Like you say, I guess X happened. Apparently X happened. Maybe X happened. I guess we'll see. Because I guess because I wasn't there. I'm reading stories off of like Twitter and, and shit. It's kind of hard to definitively say this is real when you're reading a Twitter story. Maybe it's just not real to me yet. I don't know. Maybe I still don't believe these people. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's just the terminology I use. I don't think, I think you're thinking too deep into it. Like, I don't think anyone really thinks that deep into it or cares, honestly. <laughs> right? Do I ever go out towards Federal Way? It was considered nice in the 90s. Is it considered a bad area now? Says Turtle Dude. I've been there a couple of times. Um, there's a lot of shopping out there. Like, there's actually a, if I remember correctly, that's where there's, like, a halfway there, there's, like, an outlet mall with a Dave & Buster's in it that we've been to a couple times, but many years ago. And past that, if you go further to Federal Way, there's, like, a buffet, there's another mall over there. And even the first time we even went to that mall, that mall was half empty. Like, half the stores were gone. And I don't know if that's just a sign that it's a rundown part of, you know, Washington or not. I don't know. I didn't necessarily witness a lot of crime, but then again, we don't go out there often, so I wouldn't know. Um, but it is a very condensed shopping area for a lot of restaurants and, 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 and stores and stuff like that. I think we went to an Old Country Buffet out there once. Was it? I don't know if it was Old Country Buffet or Golden Corral. We went to a buffet out there years ago once, and it was just okay. It wasn't great. <clears throat> Let's see here. I just received a $3 tip. I always wanted to visit Seattle during a vacation. It's sad that such a beautiful city fell so far in a vacation you'd like to do with the fam. Um, I mean, we've talked about this a, a million times. One thing I'd like to do someday is go to uh, somewhere in Canada, perhaps. A little international flair. I don't know if it would be Vancouver or something like that, because that would be a shorter trip, but it would be nice to do, you know, go to another country and see the differences in culture and food and stuff like that. Uh, I know my wife has always wanted to go to Japan. I wouldn't mind going there for tourism, but it's incredibly expensive to go there. Uh, Europe, a nice European vacation where maybe you go to the major places like, you know, the UK, France, Italy, Germany, something like that. That would be pretty nice. So I don't know. You know, it's a possibility, but it's, it's never really been viable. 
you know i think we're in a situation now where we're just starting to get financially back on our feet after my bankruptcy a few years ago um and sadly inflation doesn't help with that with inflation going crazy and interest rates up i can't do things that i'd like to do i can't refinance my home you know i can't you know it sucks so you know maybe in the future if things stay the way they are and things stay good and you know my youtube presence stays the way it is it doesn't doesn't disintegrate because it hasn't it's been pretty steady i'd argue for many years now if we could stay the course and just be patient which i know is tough that's one of the hardest things to do in life is just to sit still and be patient because you always want to make progress you always want to say here's the next goal here's the next big thing coming right now i don't know what that is because i don't know what's going to happen in my 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 future my goal was to stay the course after my bankruptcy and eventually be able to do things like refinance my house and i can't do that because of what's going on financially in this country so i'm stuck but i would love to eventually maybe go on a nice vacation with my wife i think we deserve it you know we've been married for five years we've never done a darn thing i take that back we've been married for four years going on five and uh, we never done a darn thing since we got married you know it's just been work, work, work. We don't have time to do shit. We don't have the means to do shit. I would love to have a honeymoon with my wife, but, you know, hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Cletus says, Italy is like an open-air sewer. Despite having the most beautiful architecture and monuments in the world, this, I, I am Italian myself. It's a sad situation, just like your Seattle. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe just perhaps those aren't the right places to go. Maybe you don't go to the main tourist trap cities. Maybe you go to the burbs. You go to the countryside. You go to that place, right? Maybe that's where the, the, the nice stuff is, right? We got a few more minutes, guys. Just a few more. If anyone wants to talk or, or tag in the chat, go please, by all means. Yum Yum says, You and Cash should go to Disneyland or Six Flags for a vacation if you can't go outside the USA yet. We talked about it. We talked about doing stuff like that. I mean, you have to understand something. Disneyland's fucking expensive as shit. It actually really is. You know, you know like go to Universal. Universal Studios and go to, you know, Super Super Nintendo World or whatever the hell it's called. That would be kind of nice. But even those things, they're tourist traps and they're very expensive. Uh, Canadian Curse says, I'm sure sushi tastes the same in Seattle as it does in Tokyo. That's why you probably wouldn't eat sushi. You know, you go get things that they're, they're local delicacies there. Things that you can't just get over here, right? Go see the sights that you can't see here. Experience those things in person. Pretty nice. France is going to hell in a handbasket, according to the news. Eastern Europe areas not near Ukraine would be the best travel sites right now. <laughs> wow. Brian says, how long before the next version of Street Fighter should be released? Version? Like an update for Street Fighter Six? Next year sometime. I think annually. Doing an annual update is a good idea. If you're talking like Street Fighter Seven, I mean, that really depends on the longevity of the game and how well it's received. Right now, this game is way more well-received than Street Fighter Five was. And Street Fighter V, if you can believe it, lasted seven years of that trash game. Seven years of trash. And these people in the community ate it up like suckers. So, man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I would like? I would like it to go back to how it used to be, where it wasn't just one game at a time by Capcom. That they would do a straight-up Street Fighter game, a Versus-style game, another spin-off game that played a little differently. I would love for that to happen again, because there used to be the big four. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Capcom vs. SNK 2, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, and Super Turbo. And that was amazing. Having four big games in the rotation all the time made everything feel fresh whenever you went to a Street Fighter event. But now they've got one, and that sucks. You don't want just one game. So I would, I would hope that if Street Fighter 6 is good enough of a success, they would make more fighters that are a little different. That would be amazing if they went back to that practice.
American Manga Undertaker says, what's your favorite Old and New Testament story? See, I'm old school. I don't just read the stories that are meant to be like parables for life, all right? I read the laws. I read numbers. I read Deuteronomy. That's my favorite. Reading those nice, how they had to live their lives back then. You know, you can't eat certain kinds of meat. You can only drink milk on every other Thursday of the month unless the moon's in a certain phase. That's my, that, I love that stuff. That's the one I read them over and over. Very pertinent to modern life, let me tell you. I love reading about those tenets and ways that laws and rules they had to abide by back in the day in the Old Testament. That's the, the master class stuff. <laughs> I got a $4 tip. Someone says, Disneyland was a waste of cash when I went. A water and a hot dog cost you like $30. Hope your wife and you can get, maybe go to Japan. That would talk about a cultural shock that would be. Yeah, it would be pretty neat, I think. Just too expensive. That's it, the, the problem is the cost. I mean, you're talking thousands of dollars for a plane ticket round trip, right? The, the hotels over there are absolutely tiny, but insanely expensive. And every even travel, everything there is expensive. Everything there in, in Japan is just way more expensive. So you're talking dropping thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars to have a good vacation there. And I don't know if we'll be able to do it, you know? All right. Uh, that's it for the Q&A, my friends. I hope you enjoyed the 45 minutes of just chilling. A lot of fighting game talk. I don't know where that came from. But I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video if you watched it on demand. By all means, you know, leave comments on the video and let me know what you thought. And, uh, you know, I do these from time to time when we have the extra time. And uh, we finished something early. So I hope that you enjoyed. See you soon, guys. Later.